A young girl who drowns in frozen water is saved by a young boy. She looked at his beautiful eyes and his warm tears. She till confused why he is crying. Suddenly she wakes up in a mansion and the maids is shouting her royal highness is awake. She is still confused about what is going on here and how she ended up in this world. After that maid gives her some medicine to recover her quickly. After talking with several people she realized that somehow she entered a fictional romance novel called Lady and the Beast. In this novel main character, Blake was the cursed monster crown prince and the wild Richard both fight to win the heart of the heroine, Dana. She somehow entered the body of Anthea who was Dana's stepsister. By wedding crown prince Blake, Athia become princess. However, Anthea took one look at Blake's face marked with the hereditary curse of his royal family. She committed suicide on their wedding day. This accident brought Blake into despair and his soul fell into the darkness unable to win Diana's heart. He died a tragically young death because of his curse. According to the novel Anthea drowns in the lake and Blake dives in and brings her frozen corpse and now her soul enters Anthea body. She realizes that the little boy from yesterday must be Blake. But it had already been five days since she got up but Blake hadn't come to check on her. She asked the maid if she wanted to see the crown prince but the maid told her that the crown prince received a terrible shock after that accident. Anthea tells her not to worry about anything and leads the way. On his way to meet the crown prince, Anthea thinks that her favorite novel character in Lady and the Beast is Blake but she can't believe that Diana chose Richard over Blake. But now she ends up in Anthea's body she will try to rewrite Blake's tragically dark childhood besides that Anthea has nowhere to go. Anthea was the daughter of Count Valencia and his first wife. But Anthea's mother died while giving birth to her. Count quickly remarried soon and his second sister Dana was born. The Count treats Anthea harshly and sends her off to marry the crown prince. Anthea did not kill her because of Blake's monstrous face. She died because her family abandoned her. So she has no choice to leave this place and is willing to help Blake. When Anthea enters his room, Blake tells her not to come any closer to him or you will get scared. Anthea realized that he didn't hate her but he was just frightened of her. Anthea steps in and flaps a blanket from him, making Blake totally surprised. Blake then covers his face with a pillow telling her what do you think you're doing. Anthea thinks his face will be like a dark fearless seduction type but instead, he is more like a white fluffy rabbit. She removed Blake's face mask. Blake tells her not to look at his face, but she tells him your face is so beautiful and I have never seen a beautiful face like this. Anthea tells him that I am not saying this to comfort you but it is true your huge red eyes, regal nose, and graceful chin make your face like an angelic harmony. And when you meet Diana you will release from your curse. Once the curse mark is erased from your face you will become the most handsome man on this continent. Blake tells her you still hates him but Anthea lies to him and tells him she does not try to suicide but she just fell into the lake by accident. Since she became Anthea she will never jump into the lake because of his face. She just came to thank him for saving her life. After hearing this Blake started to cry thinking that she tried to kill herself because of him. Anthea hugs him and tells him that she loves him. Blake also tells her he loves him too. Anthea know that's a big fat lie. In the novel, Blake likes the main character Diana and when the Emperor learns about this, he requests Count Valencia a marriage proposal, but Count Valencia refuses to send her daughter Dana and sends Anthea instead. The house of Count Valencia possesses the power of light and Diana can free Blake from his curse because he is the daughter of Count Valencia. Anthea was also a daughter of Count Valencia, but her power was not as strong as Dana. Prince Blake's curse is not just a birthmark it also causes him excruciating pain. The pain got even more severe in cold weather. Anthea imagined how the agonizing pain would be when he jumped into the freezing lake to save her. But he hardly expresses his pain he must suffer in silence. Count Valencia's power of light is unleashed through physical contact. The more intimate the touch the more intense its restorative power is just like a hot seductive scene. Anthea proposes they sleep together since they are married couples now making Blake so embarrassed. It is like he will explode with that embarrassment. Anthea sees him like a cute rabbit thinking that in 10 years he will grow up like a sexy beast. She did not leave him alone and grabbed his hand saying to him we must sleep together every night since they are married. Blake blushes after she holds his hand. She asked him are you feeling comfortable holding her hand too? He was full of nervousness. Anthea thinks that since she is a Valencia her touch may have some effect on him but it seems to not work. Maybe her power was not enough and she twirl away from him. Blake hugged her on the back telling her hand is so warm and not to leave him. Anthea tells him that she is not going anywhere. She just wants to pick up the blanket. She just makes a lull of him and he crawl back. Anthea lied to him telling him that her curse would be broken when he turned 18 years old and live a happy life after that. 
In the Valencia family, one member always becomes the successor and protector of the power of the light and one person in the Zarathilian imperial household always inherited the family curse. A long time ago the first king of the empire Philip became the goddess of light lover, and the goddess also gave some power to him as a sign of affection. With this power, Philip founded a mighty empire. Once Philip became emperor he betrayed the goddess and fell in love with another woman. The enraged goddess of light cast a curse on Philip's descendants that could never be broken, and would be passed down till the end of time. The cursed successor would have black marks on his face, which would slowly and painfully spread to the entire body and all would die before reaching adulthood. Anthea also knows that on his 18th birthday when he meets Diana he will be free from his curse. She makes a promise to him that she will help him defeat the Zarathilian curse and cross his heart and hope to die with him. Blake snatches his hand and tells her not to say that word again. Even if I die you must live your life. Anthea comforts him and says neither you nor I going to die so don't worry. He was weepy with tears and started crying. She pats him and tells him everything will be okay and they both lie on the bed and fall asleep. On the next day when Athia opened his eyes, she saw Blake still holding her hand and he slept all night holding her hand. When he woke up he started smiling. Athia asked him the reason for smiling. He says that because you are lying by side to him. After that, Athia spent a couple of time with Blake and she noticed that Blake did not leave his room unless it was necessary. He just eats and read and there is a peculiar eating habit of only green meal. They only serve him green salad. She asked him what kind of food do you like. He tell you like all kinds of food. Anthea sees Blake eating wilted salad and leftover food. Their only reason may be his staff have no respect for the prince. The current Lord Chamberlain is Brown, the eldest son of the Marquis family who is doing all this. Anthea called Maid Melissa and told her to give a message to the Chamberlain to meet in his room there was something she needed to ask him. After some time Lord Chamberlain Brown comes to Anthea's room. Anthea tells him that the quality of the Crown Prince's meals is rather atrocious. But Chamberlain Brown says to her you are new to this and the budget set to maintain the Crown Prince's household is very low. She knows is a big fat liar and she releases him from his duties, which made him very furious. Anthea called Lord Edmund and said to take Brown to the dungeon for embezzlement of the Imperial coffers and make an investigation of his crime. Brown angrily says he is the heir to Marquis Hamill because you married a cursed prince cannot make you the princess. Brown started screaming to let him go, which made Lord Edmund angry. His stare is enough to scare the Brown. After the Lord Chamberlain was thrown out, it caused confusion in the prince's court. Anthea makes a list of palace staff. In the future Blake is stripped of his position as a crown prince and most of his staff betray him and join Richard. To prevent future betrayers she started firing all of them who were marked on the list, which made the palace empty and only a few people left. Maid Melissa asked her that all the staff were chosen by the emperor himself would it be alright to dismiss all. Anthea comforted her and said don't worry everything is alright. Maid Melissa asked her when you like dinner to be served. That reminds her that she fired all the kitchen staff and she decided to cook today. Anthea told her to follow her and showed her a place full of spices and two spices that excited her the most are Donjang and Gotchek. The maid asked her what these spices and Anthea said here they are condiments from the Orient. Adding this sauce will enhance the flavor of the food. This make her sad because the kitchen has all these ingredients but they only serve green salad. She started making some delicious food. After some time the dinner was ready. Blake was so surprised after looking at the food. It was so delicious and awesome that Prince Blake thought he entered a new world. His reaction was so cute. Seeing him happy makes Anthea happy. In the novel, Blake suffers three tragedies during his childhood. First, he inherited the family curse. Second, his bride kills herself at their wedding and last the death of his father, Emperor Thenston. When Emperor Thenston passed away Blake's younger brother became the next emperor. That is Rickard the main hero of the novel and the bastard son of Duke of Carcel. Blake is exiled to a south island where he suffers a horrible childhood. Anthea thinks that the Emperor's death still lies ahead in the future which can be changed. The Emperor has to go to the Valley of Chaos and maybe he return at any time. After that, Anthea notices that Prince Blake loves Korean food and he enjoys them. She wants to make Korean food authentically and she needs a cauldron which is not available here. She drew a picture of a traditional Korean cauldron and she will ask the goldsmith to make one. Now she looking for a good spot to place the cauldron and suddenly a person came and asked her what are you doing here. Which made her scared and he sorry her to scared her. Anthea saw his face and knew him instinctively. It was Richard the young boy, who was the hero in The Lady and the Beast. Anthea knew him that Richard was the second son of the Duke Carcel, since the cursed Blake was destined to die at a young age. The Duke and his son were next to the throne. 
Richard's mother was a slave which excluded her from the line of succession. Richard was ambitious in his goals killing all his rivals and inherit the throne. At the end of the novel Richard uses Diana to eliminate Blake. Anthea was too afraid of this conclusion, but it wouldn't have happened if Emperor Thurston had not died suddenly. But she would do anything to prevent this from happening. Anthea controlled her emotions and asked Richard what brought you here. Richard tells her that you caused quite an uproar from the day of your marriage and fired all the count staff who were selected by his majesty. But Anthea knew all these people she fired were the spy of Richard. She tells him all this matter is our and we do not need your concern. Out of that, Richard asked her are you still mad at him for rejecting his proposal? But Anthea thinks about what bullshit is talking about. Anthea says to him are you in delusion? Who says I like you? Which surprised Richard. Anthea also tells him this kind of rudeness will not be allowed and you showing disrespect to the crown princess. Richard tries to explain her and tries to hold his hand but suddenly Prince Blake grabs his hand and stops him. Richard got scared and told him there was a misunderstanding. I and Lady Valencia are childhood friends. But Blake tells him not to address her Lady Valencia now she is crown princess. Richard blows down his head and apologizes to him. Blake tells him to get lost. Richard was very angry because of his insult. Blake gently grabs Anthea hand and tells her not to look at other men. Anthea told him not to worry after all he was the son of a dog and I did not like him. She rather prefers the cute bunny rabbit guy. Anthea asked him which type of girl do liked. He says you are my type and hugs her making Anthea happy. After that Anthea prepared a warm bath for Blake and told him today onward I will assist you in bath. Blake was embarrassed after hearing this, but he tried to avoid this. Anthea grabbed him saying she was already prepared for the bath. Blake tells her that you will get infected by his curse. There is a rumor about Blake. If anyone who saw his curse or touched it, he or she will get inflected by his curse and may invite misfortune. That is why the successor of the curse never stepped outside and was exiled to the South Island. All the curse ancestors before Blake were stripped from their titles and banished from the Imperial Palace as soon the mark appeared. But Blake father Emperor Thinston loves his son and allows him to stay in the castle. Anthea tells him she has seen his face and touched her hand too. But she is fine and does not believe in fake rumors. Blake says her face and hand have small marks but his body has a huge mark. He was afraid if she saw that mark she would hate him and see him as a monster. Anthea tells him that you are not a monster. Ever since they married she was always happy. Which makes Blake happy and they hug each other. Then Athena asked him again but he was ashamed to show his body. Athia convinces him and he starts removing his clothes but he tells her to promise him that she won't get fright after looking at his mark. To avoid his promise she lies to him saying that she will never leave him. Blake started removing his clothes and his half body was covered with mark. On the other side, Richard thinks that all the spies that he planted in the crown prince's household have been fired by Princess Anthea. His father, the Duke of Carcel, and his half-brother were furious about their plans foiled because of a ten-year-old girl. But Richard thinks he still has a trump card. That is Crown Princess Anthea. Back then Anthea used to adore Richard and she cannot hide his true feelings. But he does not know that Anthea who used to love him has already died and Anthea now is another reincarnated person. He thinks that Anthea is a puppet of him and she will be more effective than ten other spies. But it all going opposite to his plan. The Anthea he saw yesterday was different. And the Crown Prince has also changed. It was the first time the Crown Prince has used his strength against him. Richard also thinks that Anthea's presence may have an effect on his monster brother. Now Richard also sees Anthea as very attractive and he wants her. Blake removes his clothes, and his half-body is covered with marks. Anthea washed his body with the towel thinking. He was just eight years old and his half-body was already covered with the mark. When she touches the mark Blake tells him not to touch it or she will get infected. She scolded him telling him if one more time you say that word make her angry. She washed Blake back by singing my little hubby chubby tummy. Blake gets embarrassed and tells her he does not have a chubby tummy. Anthea explains it is just a song and you have a chubby tummy makes him sad. She says it is just a joke and cheers him which makes Blake happy. After that Athea received a gift and an apology letter from Richard. In the letter he apologized for what happened yesterday and sent a gift as a token. Anthea feels something fishy or he wants her to become his spy. Anthea tells Maid Melissa to send this gift back to him, but think to get quite serious. When he sends one gift after another and Anthea refuses all his gifts and returns him. After that servant hand comes suddenly and tells the princess that this time Richard sent a priceless treasure. That is a ring set with mermaid breath which shocked Anthea and think Richard was crazy. Mermaid breath is a mana stone that contains the power of the sea. Only a few exist in the entire world. In the novel, Richard gives this ring to Diana. Anthea thinks Richard will do whatever to make her his spy. 
In the novel, this ring is described as the most beautiful jewel in the world, but Anthea refuses to take this ring and tells Servant Hand to return this to Richard. After a few days, Anthea made Melissa and Edmund go to the blacksmith shop. Anthea showed him the drawing of a cauldron and asked him to make one. The smiths agreed to make one and Anthea thanked him, then made Melissa ask the princess if there was any place she wanted to visit. But Anthea said no, she wants to go to the palace because Blake will be worried about her, wondering where did she is go. In the evening Anthea returns to the palace. She was going to her room and she suddenly heard a noise. That was Blake. He hugs her, asking her do you spend a nice time in the town. She said yes and she had a nice day. Blake was worried about Anthea because it got too late for her to return. Anthea was glad she returned to the palace and removed the Blake face mask telling him in this way you will feel more comfortable. Blake asked her why she always wanted to take off his clothes and mask. After hearing this she gets broken. She said it made her happy when she saw his husband's face without a mask. He was very happy after hearing this. Blake was a little afraid thinking that she ran away from him. And when she returned to the palace made him happy. Anthea tells him she will not go anywhere. But if any chance he falls in love with another one she will not come in their way. Blake was upset with this and told her their marriage was already arranged by his father. Anthea says maybe after some time, when you grow up you may fall for someone else. Blake says to her that she is the only one he loves. Anthea says maybe you love him now but in the future. When you are free from your curse you will become the most handsome man on this continent and the most beautiful woman fall in love with you. But Blake says to her you are his only wife and he is her only husband. Blake hugged her saying that he knew he was very selfish and told her to stay by his side until his death. After listening to this her eyes were full of tears. She started crying saying that she would never say those words again. Blake wiped his tears and suddenly Servant Han came and said that Emperor Thenston had arrived at the palace. Anthea knew that someday Emperor Thenston would return. Finally, the Emperor Thenston returns, he is the Blake father and he is the most powerful emperor in all history. Blake asked him if the emperor returns safely. Servant Han says yes, tell him the majesty has not had a single scratch after defeating the door of darkness. Blake glade his father to return save and he put his mark back. Servant Han tells Anthea that the blacksmith has come to see her. She goes with Servant Han to meet blacksmiths. On her way, Servant Han apologizes to her saying her the blacksmith is not the one who called you. She asks him did Emperor Thenston was the one who summoned her. Servant, Han says yes. Anthea had a feeling that Emperor Thenston would want to see her. Besides Servant Han made this story so that Blake would not get upset. In the novel Servant Han was willing to risk his life to protect Prince Blake. Servant Han leads Anthea to the Emperor's Hall. After Philip betrayed the Goddess of Light his descendants were cursed for eternity. However, the Goddess of Light still loved the Emperor Philip. Which is why her curse affected only one person from each generation. But the imperial court wanted to protect its honor and spread the fake rumors where the curse was contagious that why the cursed successor was banished to the southern island until his death. When the mark appears on the Blake, he should have been stripped of his title and sent to exile immediately. However, Emperor Thenston sent him to annex the palace. The prince was doomed to his early death. He didn't even dethrone Blake. He also does not show any affection to his child. But it was just an act of Emperor Thenston. He did such an act to protect his son. Emperor Thenston loves his son and Blake also has affection towards his father. Anthea reached his destination. She confidently entered the place where the Emperor was sitting on his throne. When she looks at Emperor Thenston's beautiful face, she blushed thinking why he was not the main character in his novel. Emperor Thenston greet her and asked her the reason why she sent Lord Chamberlain Brown to the dungeon. Anthea says that Lord Chamberlain Brown was embezzling the palace fund which is why she punished him. But the brown father loudly says his son has been loyal and dutiful to the empire. Anthea gives the document and evidence to the Emperor Thenston. When he read the document, he says to the brown father it is true that your son stealing from my coffer. Brown father says it will be a conspiracy against his son. Anthea tells him that his son ordered the chief to serve the leftover food and he enjoyed eating streaks to himself. After listening to this Marquis Hamill shouts at Princess Anthea. Emperor Thenston coldly said do you want to wish dead? Be careful about how you speak. She is my daughter-in-law. Marquis Hamill says she is the one who started insulting my family. The Emperor Thenston places a sword around his neck which makes him shiver. Emperor Thenston says are you going to lay hand on the crown prince? Emperor Thenston going to snap off his head and Anthea closes his eyes and servant Colin tells her to go. But before going Anthea gives a blue crystal him and says this is an animated crystal. It recorded Brown Hamel insulting the crown prince and princess. Servant Colin says he will send it to his majesty. After that Marquis Hamel's hand was severed as punishment for attempting to strike the crown princess, 
and his son's tongue was cut off for insulting the crown princess and embezzling the imperial treasure. Or Key Hamill and his son were sentenced to 30 years of hard labor, and his family was stripped of its title. Marquis had attempted to strike the crown princess in front of the emperor, and his son treated her with disrespect. A few days later, Anthea was thinking about Emperor Thenston will be free from his official duties, and he did not call his son or her either which made her frustrated, and she decided to go and meet Emperor Thenston. She calls Maid Melissa to prepare a carriage for her. She wants to go to Fillion Castle but Maid Melissa says she first makes a formal request before meeting the king. Anthea says if she makes a formal request Emperor Thenston will deny it. After some time, the carriage was ready. When Anthea entering in the carriage Blake grabs his clothes and stops her. Blake asks her where she was going, but Anthea says she gonna visit Square Village. Blake tells her you lied to him and she was going to visit his father. Blake says he will protect her and also go with her to visit his father. Anthea agrees to this and they both go to visit Emperor Thenston. Anthea knew Blake's father loved him but he could not summon him because of Blake's curse, and she knows his father will not send him out if Blake approaches him first. After some time Anthea and Blake reach the castle. When they go to visit the king two bodyguards stop them. One bodyguard says to them you will not enter unless you make a formal request to visit the emperor. But Anthea is angry and says do not dare to lay hands on her. She is a crown princess after hearing this the bodyguard gets nervous. Anthea then held Blake's hand and they both entered the emperor's room. Anthea was shocked because Emperor Thenston had just come out from his bath. Emperor Thenston was in a towel and asked them what brings you two here. But Anthea just stared at Emperor Thenston's beautiful face and his six abs. After sending her all the time with her whittled bunny wabbit husband, she forgot that she now entered the fictional fantasy world of an adult romance. Out of mind, Anthea says Majesty you have a sexy abs. The girl's tongue cannot be controlled. She says this by mistakenly. After seeing his majesty's body she forgets she come to win the trust of his majesty. She apologized to his majesty. She had never seen a man before. This moment breaks Blake's heart, and here she just got double doomed. Emperor Thenston wearing his dress says to Anthea it is not a good time for a conversation. Anthea is looking at him while he dresses up. She thinks maybe she will end up like Lord Chamberlain. Emperor Thenston then looked at his son who was looking at him but he did not speak to him. Emperor Thenston said he would soon summon her. Anthea greets him and says she will return to their quarter. But Blake seems to be disappointed because his father never says a single word to him. After that, Anthea sees Blake is not happy because he sees his father after a long time. But his father does not acknowledge him. Anthea says you get tired go and take some rest. Blake asks Lord Edmund can we talk for a moment and he agreed with this. Then in a room, Blake tells Lord Edmund to remove this shirt. At first, Lord Edmund was shocked and removed his shirt. Blake was so surprised after looking at Lord Edmund's body. He asked him what he would do to make his body like him. Lord Edmund agreed to help him. Blake was angry because Anthea did not think of him as a man. When Blake shows his stomach Lord Edmund says it is not a chubby tummy this makes him happy. But Lord Edmund also says it looks like a baby fat and here he gets sadly. After some time, Anthea washed Blake's head but it seemed like Blake was upset and tried to hide his stomach. Anthea told him the cauldron she ordered would arrive tomorrow but Blake was not happy with this. Blake tells her for now he gonna train himself and that he will not eat until he looks like a man. Anthea remembers she says this word to the emperor and Blake takes this seriously. Blake jumps on the bed and says he will not eat until his tummy is gone. Here, Anthea used her special move and she tickles Blake and he tells her to stop. And then Anthea hugs him saying that she loves him and asks him to promise her. He will not stop eating. Blake agrees with her and he smiles at her. On another side, a young boy named Unhan enters the Emperor's Hall. He was the spy of Emperor Thenston. Emperor Thenston asked him did the Crown Prince and Princess return to their castle. He said yes they returned safely. Emperor Thenston thinks since Anthea's arrive, Blake has changed. First, he used to shriver against him but now Blake was standing tall against him full of confidence. The Emperor Thenston asked him his opinion on the Crown Princess. Because Emperor Thenston was far away from Blake for a month and he was taking care of the Door of Darkness. Unhan said we can trust Crown Princess. Unhan has been secretly guarding the Crown Prince for the past month by the order of Emperor Thenston. Emperor Thenston wanted to see if courtiers would treat Blake badly in his absence. But it seemed like, Unhan forgot about his mission and found himself observing Anthea. Maybe he fell in love with Anthea. Another day, finally Cauldron arrived and everyone appreciated Anthea. She just gets embarrassed with this. Anthea decides to cook dinner for all of them and Blake decides to help her in cooking. But suddenly Lord Colin arrived and told her that Emperor Thenston sent a gift and letter to her. 
Anthea was so surprised she never expected this. The letter has an imperial seal which confirms that this letter was sent by His Majesty. Lord Colin presents the gift sent by His Majesty, but Anthea was still confused by he sent all these gifts without any reason. Or maybe she compliments about his abs. Anthea decides to meet his majesty. On other days, she gets dressed up to meet his majesty. She just looks like an angel. When Blake saw her he was stunned by his gorgeous look. Blake praised Anthea telling her she is looking so pretty. Anthea thanked him and Blake said good luck to her. After that, Anthea meets Emperor Thenston and thanks him for his all gifts. Emperor Thenston asked her if she cared for the crown prince. Anthea says yes and the crown prince is her husband. Emperor Thenston also says many people despise him because of his curse. But Anthea told him those people were misled by false rumors and asked him do you love your son? Emperor Thenston asked her why she was so certain about his love for his child. She says if you hate your son you wouldn't be sending a gift to his wife. But Emperor Thenston tells her the gifts are the compensation for handling the Marquis Hamill incident. Emperor Thenston says let's enjoy some tea. Anthea was surprised by the look at the dessert and when she tasted it was so delicious. Anthea also says Prince Blake also likes dessert. Emperor Thenston says he will send some dessert to the crown prince, which makes Anthea happy and she thanks him. Emperor Thenston told her that he heard you have a deep knowledge of oriental culture. Anthea knows she cannot fool Emperor Thenston easily and she comes near to Emperor Thenston and says she is gifted in language and she can understand different languages from all over the world. Emperor Thenston says so you have knowledge of oriental culture and she says yes father. The Emperor Thenston asked her why she called him father. Anthea says because she married his son that is why you became his father-in-law, in short father. Emperor Thenston agreed with her and said if is there any problem you can meet him. After that, Anthea prepared the food by using a cauldron and everyone was amazed with her cooking skill. And Unhan was watching all this secretly. Unhan fell under the love of Princess Anthea. Unhan is an emperor's shadow and his existence is unknown to the outside world. His life was saved by Emperor Thenston. That is why Unhan became his loyal shadow and carried out secret missions. And he never failed in his mission. However, this time Unhan cannot control himself because of the smell of the food inside the cauldron and Unhan decides to have one little bite from the cauldron. And he silently goes towards the cauldron. When he reaches and goes to take a bite, he heard the noise of someone coming. It was Anthea and she was surprised at how the gamadot lid opened. And she noticed it was a cat. It was Unhan who turned into a cat. Cat weepy with tears and meow. Anthea thinks the cat must be hungry. And cat stares at the cauldron and Anthea decides to feed him some food. Anthea gives some food to the cat. She watched him while he ate. And she cuddles him because of his soft fur. And suddenly Blake came and asked Anthea why you held this cat like this. Anthea say she was so nice and gentle. Blake asked her if the cat was he or she. Anthea gets curious and goes to check if the cat is he or she. The cat gets scared and runs immediately. After some time, Anthea comes to meet Emperor Thinston. Emperor Thinston asked her why she was there. Anthea said you tell her she can visit any time she wants. Anthea gave him tea which she made from scorched rice. Emperor Thinston also likes the tea and says she can visit him any time she wants. After that, Anthea was tired and lay on the bed, thinking she had spent a wonderful day today. Suddenly Blake came near to her, and you cannot expect what he says. He just said meow and Anthea was surprised. He hugged her saying he would be his cat if she liked only the cat. Prince became a cat for his princess. And again he says meow and Anthea cannot control herself and she hugs him and says you are just too adorable. On the other side, Richard was shocked by the report. In this report, Emperor Thenston sends gifts to Anthea every day. Richard thinks what kind of favor she did to his majesty. Emperor Thenston is the only person Richard respects and he does whatever to impress him. But he was unable to win his heart. On the other side, Anthea wins the hearts of Blake and Emperor Thenston which makes him regret his decision to not accept Anthea proposal back then, which makes Richard more curious about Anthea. He wants to make her own. Richard goes and visits his father, and his father was very angry and threw in glass at him. He said Richard the Emperor Thenston sent gifts to Anthea and she also visited the Imperial Palace frequently. He also heard they are going together to the Grand Ball during the Festival of the Seal. The Festival of the Seal is the most important holiday in the entire empire. On this day the Emperor sealed the Door of Darkness and returned safely to the kingdom. Emissaries from all over the world will gather in the Imperial Ballroom. If they witness the Emperor and Princess Anthea together it will naturally raise the Crown Prince's status. Richard's father sees that his plan is failing. Richard says there is another way if we bring the Crown Princess to their side. 
Richard tells him that Anthea loves his father and she does whatever his father orders her. Richard's father thinks this might be a good idea. In past, we see Count Valencia slap Anthea for calling him. Anthea called him because she feeling cold. But Count Valencia says she is a disgrace to his family. Anthea apologized to him and said she would never call him again. But his father says that the only way she helps Valencia's family is by just dropping dead. We can see Anthea's father is a very trashy person and evil too. And suddenly Anthea woke up. And Blake asked her if she was alright. Anthea realizes it is a dream. A nightmare where she saw some fragment of real Anthea's memory. Blake says because of his curse she had a bad dream. But Anthea hugged him and thanked him for staying by his side. In Count Valencia's family, Anthea's father heard the praises of Princess Anthea from the different people. He was crept about these facts and never heard this thing from Anthea. He thinks of using Anthea for his benefit. And suddenly a servant came and told her the Duke of Castle wanted to meet him. Then Count Valencia meets Duke and they greet each other. Duke says he heard a lot of praise of Princess Anthea. Count Valencia says Anthea is an obedient child and she even risks his life for him. Duke asked him if your younger daughter was as well-bred as her older sister. Count Valencia says Diana is better than her and she is his pride and joy. Duke proposed to him that he would love to have his younger sister as a daughter-in-law. Count Valencia is shocked by this proposal and if he wed Diana to the castle family, she will become queen someday. For this, the Duke will check Diana's education and talents. Count Valencia agreed to him and tell to examine her immediately. Sometime later, Anthea was upset thinking of the nightmare of how poor Anthea suffered all of this. Maid Melissa comes and tells her that Count Valencia has come to see her. At first, Anthea was a bit nervous and told Maid Melissa to escort him to the drawing room. In the drawing room, Count Valencia is waiting for her. He thinks how can his daughter keep him waiting like this. After one hour, Anthea enters the drawing hall and he started yelling at her, but he was stunned by his look. She looked gorgeous and she looked very confident. He cannot believe this child is Anthea. Anthea went straight to the point and asked him, what brings you here? Count Valencia has no respect for her and yells at her. She becomes so arrogant now and he will teach her a lesson. Maid Melissa tells him to show respect to the crown princess. Count Valencia angrily tells the maid Melissa not to interrupt the father of the crown princess. Anthea says to address his staff with respect and if you do not have anything to tell just leave. Count Valencia gets very angry after listening to her and going to hit her. Anthea warns him say if he does such a thing he might end up like Marquis Hamill. Count Valencia was scared because Anthea now has completely changed and she became the most powerful woman in the empire. Count Valencia apologized for his loose composure and asked her why are you as cold to him. Anthea tells him to leave immediately and not to come to the crown prince's palace ever again. If this kind of rudeness happens again he shall not be forgiven. The two servants come and throw out the trashy Count Valencia. Anthea knows the only reason he comes to visit is to frighten her and to control her like a puppet. He may also heard the emperor was favoring her, and Anthea never wants to visit him again. After that incident, his father continued to send her letters, but she doesn't even bother to read. The only important thing she had was to show her presence at the Festival of the Seal. That is why she practiced dance and she was unable to do that and fell on the ground. Everyone asked her if she was alright. Even the cat also worries about her. Anthea says she is fine and the dance teacher says she will continue tomorrow. When she saw the cat, she started playing with him and squeezed him tight. After that, Anthea gives him some food and Blake also comes after his training. Blake glares at the cat and the cat also gets nervous. Blake never likes any male who attracts Anthea and he also acts like a cat. Anthea asked him to teach her how to dance and she would love to have her first dance with her husband. Blake agrees to help her. Now they both held hands of each other and were ready to do practice. They both start dancing and Anthea makes the same mistake again. Blake tells her she can do it better if she just relax. And they started dancing again. At night, Anthea thanked him for his help. Blake tells her his father is better at dancing than him, and everyone will be busy looking to see you so they won't notice your feet. Blake also wants to go to the festival, and Anthea tells him they will go together when he becomes of her age. On the other day, Anthea bring food for Emperor Thenston. When he tastes it, he likes the food, and they both enjoy the dinner. Emperor Thenston says he will build a glass arboretum for her in the garden at Amelia Castle. For that, he will fill the lake with soil, the lake in which Anthea drowned. Anthea tells him there is no need for that. She just accidentally fell into the river. But Emperor Thenston is serious about that. After that, Anthea tells everything to the Blake and asks his opinion. Blake also wants to rid of the lake as soon as possible. And they decided to grow different vegetables there. Anthea asked if there were any flowers you wanted to grow. Blake says he wants to grow a red rose plant. 
A red rose means love it is often given when someone proposes marriage. Anthea thinking about whether to take a red rose from Blake. After that, finally, the day of the ball came. Anthea was getting ready earlier, and she thanked all of the servants for helping her. Emperor Fenston tells her she looks so beautiful. Anthea also says he looks very handsome. They both entered the hall where everyone blew their heads. Anthea noticed Richard had also come and gave a smile at her. Emperor Fenston asked Anthea if there was any problem. Anthea tells his majesty in his ear that you are looking the most handsome out of everyone. Emperor Fenston smiled after listening to this. Everyone started chatting about how Emperor Fenston was smiling, but they all fell silent once his expression changed. The emperor was rarely seen smiling, which made it an unusual event. The ceremony began with one person bringing a golden glass. The emperor then held this glass and gave his speech. Anthea thinks Emperor Fenston will ask for his hand in the dance, but she wants his first dance with Blake. Emperor Fenston said he was unwilling to dance today and told everybody to enjoy the party. Emperor Fenston tells Anthea that he knows he wants his first dance with Prince Blake, and that Emperor Fenston will wait for her for his second dance to dance with her. After that, Anthea meets several royal families. She had to remember all the names of the royal family which was a very difficult task for her, and she managed it very well. If she will study hard in her real life she would have gone to the best school. While meeting with several people Anthea sees his father. He was very upset with her and got away from her. Here is the first time she meets his little sister Dana. Now the trashy Richard has come and asked Anthea to your his first dance. But Anthea refused his request. And tell him his first dance will be the only one who is greater or level of the Emperor Fenston. That hurt the ego of trashy Richard. And everybody around them is laughing at Richard. Richard was humiliated by this and went back. After some time, Anthea goes to the terrace for fresh air and misses his bunny husband. And suddenly she heard a voice asking her permission to enter the terrace. When she entered it was Diana who looked like a beautiful angel. In the novel, whenever Diana and Anthea used to play, Count Valencia used to separate them and not allow them to stay together. Diana was overwhelmed with guilt thinking that Anthea died because of her. To atonement herself she left the house and became a servant in Blake's household. But now she became Anthea the story had changed now. But the real Anthea was already gone. And Diana also is not in guilt. Diana told her his entrance was very amazing and she also heard about her falling into the lake. Then Diana looks here and there and gives Anthea a fireman a stone. Anthea thanked her and she was joyful with tears. Anthea never imagines that she is more beautiful than in the book. In the evening, Anthea reached home and Blake hugged her. It is just like a daily routine for them to hug each other. Blake asked her if she enjoyed the ceremony. Anthea tells him everything is so fun and she does not dance with the Emperor Fenston. Blake asked her the reason for not dancing. She tells him she wants his first dance with him. And Emperor Fenston also knows this. She also tells him she has met the person who will free Blake from his curse. She asked him to promise her when he is free from his curse he will dance with her. But Blake was scared if she tried to leave him. He was crying and hugged her saying not to leave him. And here she tells him a lie to comfort him and he falls back to sleep. Anthea making a planning to leave him. To break the curse Blake needs to follow the original story and fall in love with Diana. But first Anthea will get rid of trashy Richard because he will try to snatch Dana for Blake. And she decided to meet Blake with Diana. After some time, Anthea and Blake were ready to meet Diana. Blake tells her that he is nervous about his sister-in-law. There is a plot twist. Blake is meeting Diana earlier than in the original story. When the carriage arrives Diana rushes toward Anthea and hugs her. Diana told her she was very excited to meet her. Even she could not sleep properly. Anthea pats her and tells her to meet the crown prince. Diana blew down his head and said it was his honor to meet him, and also thanks him for inviting her. Here Anthea lies to them saying she has a meeting with his majesty and asks Blake to show the castle to Diana, and she runs away from them thinking that they will fall in love with each other. Anthea goes to the library and reads books. Anthea hopes they will fall in love according to the original story. In the future will Blake falls in love with Diana. She thinks about how Blake's reaction will be when he comes after her asking for a divorce. She is a 10-year-old girl, but her imagination level is on the next level. But in her mind, she wondered if she had the power of the light. She will be the one who saves Blake. When she returned she heard the noise thinking they are fighting and rushed towards the rooms. Anthea asked them the reason for fighting. They both say the same thing and Anthea tells them to calm down but their reaction seems to be different. They are both argued because they both like Anthea. And here Anthea wants them to get close to each other. But she was happy seeing them close and fight for one thing. Two years later, Anthea was cooking and Blake came from behind and hugged her. It has been two years and they still following their daily routine. 
After that, they all went to the outside the palace, and Blake and Diana still argued about Anthea. Anthea was happy seeing them and their childish reaction. Diana tells him he is a husband of Anthea, but he never kissed her. Make Blake blush and his face turns red, and Diana is the winner of the argument. It is a perfect explanation of the men cannot win in arguments with a woman. Anthea tells them it is now time for training. Diana tells Blake, let's race and see who will reach the armory first and she starts running without any warning to him. Maid Melissa was happy after seeing Prince Blake finally have a good friend. When Anthea hears this she thinks in her mind that Diana will only become Blake's friend and not more than that, which makes her relieved. Form is bottom of his heart. She wants to stay with Blake. She had now everything. His bunny husband, most caring and lovable father, and a cute little sister Diana, and every person important to her, and she decided to stay with Blake. Anthea tells Maid Melissa to let go together in the Imperial Palace to His Majesty. In the Imperial Palace, Anthea tells everything to His Majesty and Blake, how they can break the curse. Emperor Finston cannot believe Anthea's words. In a room, Blake and Anthea are arguing about her suggestion. Blake tells her that he just wants to stay with her side. Anthea realizes that Blake just wants them to stay with her, and he does not think about his curse. After that two more years have passed now and there are so many changes happening in the Crown Prince Palace. The Arboretum was built on the top of the filled in lake. Some new servants are joined which they can trust. And here your main lead looked at the realms as the most powerful female of the empire. Emperor Thenston gave her the Cephia Palace and also gave the office room on the third floor of the Imperial Palace. Anthea is going to the office room. But it is not an ordinary office. The office has a secret room in which it was filled with ancient books and text. It also has books on light magic and the cursed. It is a palace where Anthea does secret research to break Blake's curse. A thousand years ago there was a nation called Jelkin, but it was brought down by Philips and the Empire of Asterix was founded. Since then ancient language used in Jelkin has disappeared and remains a mystery to scholars even to this day. In the novel, Richard uses this fact to fool the emperor. He spread the rumor that there's ancient black magic that can move curses from one person to another. Emperor Thenston falls for his tricks and offers himself to save Blake. The result ends with his death, and Anthea does whatever to stop him. To stop this from happening, she needs a secret weapon just in case. Anthea was scared when she heard someone come into the room, but she is relieved and smiles after seeing her father, Emperor Thenston. Anthea was normally greeted by praising his majesty each time they met. Emperor Thenston tells her to take a break, because she never takes a rest and always researches in how to break the Blake curse. Anthea tells him it is never it chore when it's something you love. Emperor Thenston pats her and says he is saying it for Anthea's own good. In the training hall, Blake and Diana do sword fighting. They both are doing their best at win. They both get tired after a long time of training, where Diana asked him why he was going easy on her which Blake tells her because she is Anthea's little sister, where Blake also asked her the same question, and Diana says because he is Anthea's husband. They both go easy on them because of Anthea. Blake asked her why she wanted to become the knight. Diana tells him the reason because she wants to become strong to protect his sister. Blake asked her to take care of Anthea if he died. Diana gets angry with this and tells him. She will be devastated by this. But Blake is worried about his curse, and Diana tells him the curse will be broken someday. Diana tells him to take an oath of night honor to protect Princess Anthea. Then Blake vowed to protect Anthea and Diana was happy to hear this. After some time, Blake was sleeping after his training and Anthea looked at him and tussled his head. Blake was happy to see her. He tells her that he always had a good dream when she was with him. When Anthea was not there with Blake, he always had a bad dream and nightmare. But now she is with him. He never had a nightmare again. Anthea thinks Blake gets tried for his training and she pats him like a baby. Blake tells her he is not a baby. Anthea tells him she always looks at him like a baby. Blake was shocked after hearing this and devastated too. Anthea never leaves a chance to tease him. She became like a thug now. The other day, Blake was a little upset after seeing his height. Even Diana becomes taller than him. Anthea come tell him at a lunch time. Blake disappointingly says his height is not growing. Anthea tells him his height is growing and he just needs to eat and they both go to lunch. In the novel, Richard was about six feet tall and Blake was a bit shorter than him. In Count Valencia's house, Diana was doing practice with his wooden sword. While she was training his father suddenly entered the room and asked him what she was doing. Diana hid his sword behind his back and said she was doing nothing. Count Valencia found something suspicious and grabbed her hand and the sword fell. Count Valencia tells her that high society is laughing at him because of what Anthea said. He wants Diana to marry into the Carcel family so she can become a princess, 
and become a successful lady. He asked her to tell him everything that happened at the Crown Prince's palace, and to hide an animated crystal there the next time she went. Diana was very scared of his father. On the next day, in the Crown Prince's palace, Anthea and Blake are having dinner. Blake was confused after seeing a sprouting dish and asked Anthea. She tells him it is a bean sprout soup that will help you to grow your height. At first, he was hesitant to eat, but to improve his height, he started eating and whole reaction changed because it was so delicious. Diana was secretly listening to all this and going back to the Count Valencia. His father asked her why she brought the animated crystal here. Diana told him it was broken. Count Valencia asked her how far has the crown prince curse progressed. Diana says she does not know either. Count Valencia shouted at her saying she couldn't even do anything right. Diana gets scared after listening to this. Count Valencia gets very angry and throws out Diana's wooden sword. Diana stops him and says that this sword is given by Anthea. It is special to her. With some little courage, Diana tells him she wants to become a knight and wants to enter the academy next year and she also doesn't want to do his outlandish thing anymore. Count Valencia slaps Diana. After that, Diana was in the carriage going to the crown prince's palace. Diana was very sad and carrying the animated crystal, thinking of the yesterday night, how his father beat her and gave her a last chance, or she would marry straight off to Count Cornwell. Diana does not want to do this, and she wants to tell everything to Anthea, but she has no courage to tell her and does not want to involve Anthea thinking it is all her fault. We see Anthea looking outside the window, and it is snowing outside. Suddenly, Anthea notices Diana. Diana is very upset and says something. Anthea asks her if it is all right or not. Diana suddenly changes her expression and tells Anthea, let's have a snow fight. After some time, Diana and Blake play snow fighting, with Maid Melissa and Anthea looking at them through the palace window. Maid Melissa asks Anthea to go play with them, but Anthea refuses, saying she is not fond of the snow. Maid Melissa convinces her and asks her to join. Then Anthea also goes outside and joins them. I wonder if the Blake curse will not get triggered in the snow. Maid Melissa is very happy to see them. After playing with snow, they enter the palace, where their clothes become wet. Anthea tells Diana to remove her clothes because they get wet. But Diana refuses, saying she will clean her clothes when she reaches home. Anthea noticed Diana's leg was hurt, and her cheeks seemed swollen. Diana says she is fine, but Anthea holds her hand and tells Diana to tell her the whole truth. Now Diana is in a panic situation, and she does not want to let Anthea know the whole truth. But after listening to her sister, her eyes are full of tears. She cries in Anthea's arms and tells everything to her. Anthea tells Diana that she should have already told about this situation. Diana was scared of the truth because she was afraid Anthea would not want to see her again. Anthea tells her she will never get angry with her, and she always adores her like a little sister. Anthea thinks if there was a real Anthea there, she would also never hate her little sister. Diana thanked her, and Anthea saw Diana smiling again. I was also relieved and very happy. After that, Diana fell asleep, and Anthea stayed beside her. Anthea had never imagined that Count Valencia would hurt Diana and beat Diana to become his spy and watch over her. Anthea was very angry, thinking she might have to take care of Count Valencia first. Suddenly, Blake came, and he asked if Diana was sleeping. Anthea says yes, and she will stay with Diana for tonight. Blake tells Anthea it was not her fault, so do not worry. Anthea thanked him for supporting her. In the evening, Count Valencia tries to enter the Crown Prince's palace, but Butler Han stopped him, saying it was the Crown Prince's order not to let him enter. Now we see Servant Han is prompt to the head butler. Count Valencia was very shocked after hearing this, saying it was not Anthea but a monster who is stopping him from entering the palace. Lord Edmund tells him to mind his manners, but Count Valencia gets very angry and try to enter the palace forcefully. Lord Edmund stops him and warns him not to try to enter the palace. Prince Blake came and asked them what was going on there. Lord Edmund tells everything to Prince Blake. Prince Blake tells them to escort Count Valencia to the Arboretum. In the Arboretum, Prince and Count Valencia are having tea. Count Valencia is very nervous because even Blake is his son-in-law. He only sees him once on a wedding day. Count Valencia flinches, saying he came here to take Diana for her engagement. Prince Blake says she was sleeping, and Diana will stay here forever. Count Valencia gets tense, thinking if Diana tells everything to Prince Blake. Count Valencia lies, saying Diana is the one who wanted to get rid of Anthea, but he will teach her a disciplined bit. Blake asked him if he also disciplined his wife too. Count Valencia says he used to discipline Anthea a bit, and he did this because he loved her. Now Count Valencia is showing his true nature, saying, what happened to Anthea when you're going to die sooner? Blake gets very angry after hearing this and asks him that who told him he was going to die. 
Count Valencia was shocked, thinking if Blake would find a cure for his curse. Blake says he promised Anthea he wouldn't die, and if he dies, she will never go to Count Valencia's house. In his mind, Count Valencia is thinking how dare Blake speak to him like that when he is just a monster. But the surroundings change when Prince Blake tells him that he is thinking of him like a monster. Count Valencia is terrified with fear and full of sweat. He thinks Prince Blake is reading his mind. Prince Blake asked Count Valencia if he was interested in his curse. Count Valencia flinched and said he was not interested. Blake grabs his hand and says it is a goddess's curse, it's like a disease, which means it can spread to anyone if he touches it. Count Valencia gets scared and says it is just a fake rumor, but Prince Blake gave a devilish smile saying it was not a rumor. After hearing this, Count Valencia gets very scared, screaming loudly, thinking he will also get the Blake curse. He just imagined his hand getting infected. He will suffer like Blake and have a horrible death. But it was a false rumor. Blake coldly tells him to stay away from Anthea and never come back to the palace again. It was so satisfying. If Anthea was there, she would definitely enjoy this show. On another day, Anthea goes and visits Blake in Blake's room. She asked if he got proper sleep or not. Blake says he just couldn't fall asleep at night and gives a red rose to Anthea. She thanks him and she is going to pick that flower. But suddenly Blake falls. Anthea grabs him asking if he is alright. She is going to get the Count Physician. But Blake stops her, saying he just wants her to stay with him. They both fell asleep. Anthea and Blake hold each other's hands and sleep the entire day. When Anthea wakes up, she saw Blake who is smiling and looking normal now. She asked him why his face is so flushed. He tells her because she is patting him like a baby. Anthea gets fidgeted. She forgot it is an adult novel. Blake pulled himself a little closer to her and grabbed her hand. Anthea says she thought Blake would be upset with her for petting him. Blake tells her he never said that. Does Anthea think her husband is becoming more flirtatious by the day? After that, Emperor Thinston banished Count Valencia to an island west of the Valley of Chaos. He was formally charged with the duty to patrol the island. The rumors say Count Valencia went mad. It could be an act by him so he could return to the Empire, but Count Valencia garnered no sympathy. After that, Diana stayed in the Crown Prince's palace and prepared for the Knight Academy entrance exams. In her room, Diana was studying, and Anthea brought coffee for her. Diana thanked her, feeling like the luckiest girl in the world. Anthea told Diana to give her best in the exam. Afterward, Diana passed the Knight Academy entrance exams. Anthea congratulated Diana, saying she came ninth in the class. Diana made a gloomy face because the result was better than she thought. But Diana wanted to go to the Academy and also wanted to stay with Anthea. What a typical situation this is. Anthea pinched Diana's cheek and told her to stay with her and forget about the Knight Academy. Diana said she wants to become a knight and also says to wait for her for six years. Here's Anthea thought about whether she would break the Blake curse within six years or give up everything and prepare to leave. Diana told her to promise that she would wait for her. Anthea promised she would wait for her. Now it was a new year, another festival of the ball. In the novel, this was the year when Emperor Thenston died after falling for Richard's tricks. But now Anthea was there, she would protect Emperor Thenston at any cost. Now, father and daughter made an awesome entry into the festival. The music played, and everyone was dancing. Here, the trashy Richard came to appreciate Anthea's beauty, asking for her hand to dance. As usual, Anthea refused him. Suddenly, Diana came and told Richard that Anthea did not want to dance with him. Diana and Anthea walked away from him. Richard was quite lucky this time because he did not get humiliated. After that, Anthea and Diana went outside and sat together. Anthea asked her what she thought about Richard, and Diana said he was so annoying she couldn't stand him. Her reaction seemed like she hated Richard so much, but Anthea was worried about Diana might end up with Richard, as in the novel. However, everything was the opposite. That night, Anthea and Emperor Thinston went to the terrace, where Anthea was amazed by the beautiful view outside. They could see the whole palace from there. Emperor Thinston told her how Blake used to hide in this room while playing hide and seek. Anthea suggested he visit Amoria Castle, and if he does, Blake will also be happy to see him. But Emperor Thinston was worried about Blake's curse and did not want to hurt him further. Anthea said the Blake curse would be broken someday and reminded him that there is no black magic book that can transfer the curse to another. She warned him not to fall prey to anyone, especially Richard. Emperor Thenston said he would not fall for such foolish tricks, but Anthea knew he might. In the novel, there was a reason why Emperor Thenston fell into Richard's trap. One day, Blake's condition worsened, and the door of darkness opened. Emperor Thenston tried with all his might to close the door, but there was no way to ensure Blake's life if he used light magic. 
he had no choice and fell into Richard's trap, resulting in his death. Anthea told him she was a master of language and put her trust in her. Emperor Fenston patted her and said he would not make any reckless decisions. Now, he had two children to take care of and protect, Blake and her. Anthea knew he was referring to Blake and her. According to the novel, Emperor Fenston dies this year and she will stop this from happening. The next day, Diana was ready to go to the Knight Academy. While on the way, she entrusted Blake with the responsibility of protecting her sister while she was away. Blake assured her that she was in good hands, so there was no need to worry. However, they continued to argue over their love for Anthea. Anthea urged Diana not to dawdle, mentioning that they would be late. She assured Blake that she would return soon. As they traveled in the carriage, Diana gave a red box to Anthea. It contained the key to the Valencia family house, which Diana's father had given her before he was exiled. Anthea hesitated but Diana insisted, explaining that most of the fortune belonged to her mother. Grateful, Anthea accepted the key and Diana expressed that she was merely returning it to the rightful owner. Upon reaching their destination, they were welcomed by the Imperial Knights, leaving them awestruck by Emperor Finston's preparations. The matriculation ceremony for the Knight Academy began, welcoming all the students who had passed the entrance exams. Diana's mother also attended to witness her daughter's moment. Diana bid farewell to Anthea, who urged her to write letters regularly. Diana promised to do so, saying goodbye and leaving for the Academy. Anthea, happy with the promise, returned to the palace. In the palace, everyone watched Diana's ceremony on the animated crystal. Blake asked Lord Edmund why he didn't record Anthea. Lord Edmund revealed that he also had some recordings of the princess. He showed them a box full of animated crystals capturing various moments of Anthea. Anthea questioned why so many were recorded, and Lord Edmund explained it was Emperor Thenston's order. Anthea remained confused as to why such precious animated crystals were used on her. Maid Melissa clarified that it was a present for the crown prince. Anthea was overjoyed to see Blake smiling. The Valencia family traced its lineage directly to Lionel Valencia, a great wielder of the power of light. Alongside Philip, they established the Asteric Empire. However, due to Philip's betrayal, the goddess of light reclaimed the power, and the successor of the light grew weaker over time. As the years passed, it became challenging to determine the rightful heir of the light. Nevertheless, the Valencia family remained deeply connected to the power of light. Now, Maid Melissa and Anthea were going to the library at the manor to find a book about the magic of light and the curse. When they entered, they only saw a few books, and while there were a few about the magic of light, Anthea had already read them. They proceeded to the secret room, and Anthea was stunned by the view. However, the room was full of precious jewels and paintings, leaving Anthea disappointed because she couldn't find any books about the magic of light or the successor. They left for the palace, feeling disappointed. On the way, Anthea suddenly started remembering the real Anthea's past life, which echoed in her mind. Feeling dizzy, Maid Melissa asked if she was all right. The maid stopped the carriage and took Anthea outside for some fresh air. Anthea was confused, realizing she was not the real Anthea. In her mind, when the real Anthea's memories started flashing, she couldn't bear it and felt dizzy. Suddenly, Anthea noticed Richard standing beside the trees. She remembered that today was the day when Richard's life turned upside down. Richard's mother was a slave of the Raum family. A thousand years ago, the Raum ruled the Western Hemisphere as the imperial family of the Zelkon Empire, oppressive rulers who abused their power for pleasure, and extravagance. The goddess of light grew angry at the realm's atrocious behavior and drove them out by giving her power to Philip. The Zelkon Empire fell, giving way to the Asteric Empire, and the realm were demoted to slaves. Even a thousand years later, their family remained scorned. When the duke's wife was pregnant, Duke Carcel impregnated the beautiful slave of realm, who was Richard's mother. At first, the duke raised the boys as slaves, but he also had a soft spot and accepted Richard as his bastard child, impressed by Richard's intelligence. Richard was happy to hear this and vowed to study even harder to gain more attention from the duke and ask him for his mother's freedom. However, his hope didn't last long. One day, his mother's condition worsened, and Richard went to the duke to ask for a doctor. His mother assured him she was all right, but Richard went to the duke and revealed everything. The duke asked if she had tans at all, but Richard didn't know. The duke told him to get out, and Richard had no choice but to leave. Afterward, his mother died, not from infection, but the duke ordered his men to drag her out to the garden and kill her, following his orders and burying her there. Richard was released from the shed after confirming he did not have tans at all. His big brother laughed at him, asking why he wasn't buried alongside his mother. However, Richard went straight to the study and found all the books that mentioned tans at all. Richard discovered that Tansanol was an infectious disease originating from the Raum family. 
It was highly contagious and fatal, causing black spots all over the body, a ghastly face, and coughing blood. It was considered the second generation of the curse of the goddess of light, resembling that of the cursed successor. The more books Richard read, the more certain he became that his mother did not die from Tansinol. People assumed Tansinol when Raum got sick, making them eager to kill them. That's why his mother had no choice but to endure the pain, and she told him not to tell anyone. Richard believed his mother died because of him. After that day, Richard became a completely different person. He vowed to take revenge on Duke Castle and his family, intending to strip the Duke of everything he had, kill him in the most excruciating way possible, and claim the throne for himself. Richard swore to make all those who looked down on him for being a slave kneel before him. Now I understand why Richard is evil. He lost someone precious that he loved. He was not an evil person, but his surroundings made him evil. When Anthea approached him, Richard gave a weird smile, as he never expected Anthea to come there. Anthea commented on the beautiful tree, but Richard corrected her, revealing it to be a tombstone for a Raum lady. Anthea was surprised that he mentioned the Raum family first, noting that Richard didn't even tell this Diana in the novel. Anthea asked if he knew her, but Richard lied, saying no, he had only heard that she died of Tansinol. Anthea tied a cloth on the tree, and Richard questioned her in a hushed voice about what she was doing. Anthea explained that it was a way to pay respect at a Raum funeral. Richard asked if she knew about Tansinol and she said he heard about mentioning that many people had died because they were framed for having Tansinol. Richard suggested that she might catch the curse of the goddess of light by touching the tree, but Anthea said she did not believe in a foolish tale. Richard grabbed her hand, insulting her for being high on her horse because everyone called her a saint. Anthea snatched her hand back, stating that she never considered herself a saint. She simply enjoyed being aware of every little thing and didn't want to ignore or hurt those around her due to fear. Upon hearing this, Richard started laughing, calling her a strange person. Anthea angrily told him to mind his manners and address her as your highness. Richard promised to remember it next time and apologized for calling the crown prince a monster. According to the original story, Richard's evil plan should have already taken root. However, now the original plot gets twisted by Anthea. Perhaps it may change Richard's plans. Anthea tells him he is a good man and that if he used his skills in the right way, he would only bring good fortune. Richard, attempting to flirt, asks if she wants him to stay by his side. Anthea expresses her desire for Richard to become a good person. As she leaves for her carriage, mentioning it will be late to reach the palace, Richard says he will look forward to their next encounter. This is the first time Richard smiles on his own will. He is very happy because Anthea is the first person who ever gives a gift to his mother. Richard tells his mother he will come back next year. Here, if a good-hearted person can change an evil person, let's see in the story. And Richard is also waiting for them for their next encounter. Now Anthea go to the palace. After that, Anthea states that Emperor Thenston has never once rejected her request. He provides everything she asks for and even hired a tutor for her studies. Whatever Anthea learns, she also teaches to Blake too. Anthea tells a story to Blake. A thousand years ago, in the time of the Zelkon Empire, the written word was reserved for only those in high society because books back then were quite pricey and made of lambskin. Blake says, but all those books get burned. Anthea says, yes. Anthea continues, after the fall of the Zelkon Empire, the Asterisk Empire was established, and the Raum family tried hard to revive the Zelkon era. The fifth prince of the Zelkon imperial family, Lakshal, was the head of the movement, and they were growing more aggressive by the day. They even set fire to the Fenlarn palace hoping to take out Emperor Philip. Suddenly, Anthea starts hearing the noise of a woman. The woman was also in the Fenlarn palace when the palace is burning. She was begging to open the door and saying, How could you do this to her? Did you start the fire? Blake asks her if she is alright. She says yes and starts reading again. The Fenlarn palace had been burned down, but Emperor Philip was unharmed. Blackshaw had predicted that their efforts would go to waste, so he destroyed all the texts that were written in the language of the Zelkon Empire. Suddenly, Blake's curse gets triggered, and he was in pain. Anthea asks him if he is alright. Blake says yes, but Anthea knows how he always tries to hide his pain face with his smile. She tells him to take some rest. Anthea sits on her bed, tells him to come and take a nap. Blake gets very embarrassed. Blake tells her he will not sleep on this bed because it's Anthea's bed. He slept with Anthea many times, but now he was shy to sleep because it's a woman's bed. What a crazy dude he is. Finally, they both get into bed, and Anthea pats him. Anthea touches him to check on him, but he has no fever. Blake is blushing, and his heart beats rapidly. Anthea apologizes for being useless, saying that if she had the power of light, he would not have to suffer in pain like this anymore. 
Blake says he is the happiest husband because he has a wonderful and loving, caring wife with him. Anthea is very happy to hear this, and then they both fall asleep. In the next morning, Anthea wakes up and checks on him again. But everything seems to be normal. She curses herself, saying why she falls asleep when Blake's condition could get worse. Blake also wakes up, and Anthea asks him to stay with her for today. Blake agrees because Anthea wants to see if he is really in good condition or not. Anthea pinches his cheeks because of his cute expression. Anthea also gets lots of letters from Diana today. Blake asks Anthea if Diana finished her winter training. Anthea says yes and she will write a letter to her. Blake says he will meet Diana on her holiday. While Anthea is reading letters, she notices the red rose which was given by Blake. Blake comes from behind and hugs her, asking what she is doing. There are also other ways to ask her. Blake says now his age is 11, and he is a man now, but Anthea tells him she is two whole years older than him. Blake gets emotionally damaged and remains silent. From the bottom of her heart, Anthea is really happy to see Blake in good condition, and his cute reaction may give her a little heart attack. She hugs him, saying she has the cutest husband in the whole world. In the morning, Anthea makes some delicious dish from milk called tofu, and everyone enjoys this dish and starts complimenting her. She blushes. When Anthea is going to give some of the dish to Majesty, suddenly, a cat comes near her. She picks him up and asks him where did he go. His answer is meow. Now, Blake comes with a cold intention, takes the cat away from her, and says he will take care of this cat. Anthea leaves, and Unhan, who became the cat, has a bad feeling. What's going to happen to him? He tries to run away from Prince Blake but it seems like he can't move. It's like Prince Blake has done some magic on him. Prince, with a cold glare, asks him who he is. Unhan is in very big trouble. Blake says he knows him, he was not a cat. Unhan cannot hide his personality now. Blake asks him why he always snoops on him and Anthea. It only reminds Blake of a mysterious person who appears and heals him every time he is sick when he was young. When Blake got his mark, he had been banished to the annex, and he could not sleep at night because of his curse. Every night he was tormented by nightmares and the pain ripping through his skin. He called his father for help every night, but he never came. Suddenly, a man in black appeared. He healed Blake even when Blake was in pain. He now knows this man by his scent, and he smells the same scent from that cat. Unhan thinks Blake already knows but him. He reveals himself and greets him. He reveals his name and that he was a loyal servant to Emperor Thenston. Emperor Thenston had ordered him to protect Prince Blake in secret. Blake never expected that his father is the one who sent Unhand for his care. Blake asks him why he reveals himself when he was supposed to guard him secretly. Unhand apologizes, saying he was just attracted by the crown princess's food, and that food reminds him of his hometown. Unhand was going to report this to his majesty and receive his punishment. Blake tells him not to do that and he will not like it if he gets punished for guarding him secretly. But Blake comes closer to him and tells him to never get near Anthea ever again. Unhan gets frozen by his words. Blake warns him not to try anything like this with his wife again. Suddenly, Blake thinks he was just Anthea's type. On the other side, Anthea goes to visit Emperor Thenston. Servant Colin is very happy to see her. When she comes to meet Emperor Thenston, Servant Colin gets the chance to go home earlier. It's like she's a goddess of home to him. Emperor Thenston also gives him permission to go home, and Servant Colin goes to his home. After Servant Colin leaves, Emperor Thenston tells Anthea to sit together and have dinner. At first, Anthea is a bit shy, but they sit together for lunch. Anthea then presents the dish which is still warm. Emperor Thenston asks her, what is this dish? Anthea tells him this dish is made of milk and some beans which Emperor Thenston gifted to her. Anthea also tells him that Prince Blake helped her peel the beans. Anthea says if he ever visited the auxiliary palace and saw Prince Blake how he focused on peeling beans, he would really love it. After hearing this, Emperor Thenston asks her how Blake is doing. Anthea says he was fine. She is very happy to see Emperor Thenston is always worried about his son. Emperor Thenston also asked about her condition. Anthea said she was alright and then they started eating. I can feel my mouth watering just by looking at the tofu dish. After dinner, Emperor Thenston asks her if she wants anything. But this time, Anthea will not refuse this chance. And this time, Anthea's demand is very dangerous. Anthea says she wants to go to the Fenlarn Palace. Emperor Thenston is shocked after hearing this. In the past, the Fenlarn Palace was the last imperial palace of the Zelkon Empire and the first imperial palace of the Asterisk Empire. After bringing down the Zelkon Empire, known for the persecution of the people out of indulgence and hedonism, Emperor Philip founded the Asterisk Empire. Philip believed the people had suffered enough and did not wish to add to their toil, so he simply renamed the Zelkon Palace as the Fenlarn Palace and moved in. 
However, his good intentions only brought tragedy. Lakshaw, the last Zelkon Imperial Prince, used the secret passageway in the Fenlarn Palace to raid it and set it on fire. The overwhelming flames persevered for over a month, consuming not only the Fenlarn Palace but also the region of Khan, the capital of Zelkon, in its destructive path. As a result, the Fenlarn Palace, along with Khan, became forbidden land. Now, in the present, Emperor Thenston asks her the reason to go to the Fenlarn Palace. Anthea says she might find some clues about the lithography at the Fenlarn Palace. The reason why Anthea wants to go is that she had a short vision scene during class with Blake a few days ago. A woman screams, the scorching blaze of fire, a space splendidly decorated with jewelry and lithography. This must have been in the Fenlarn Palace, that's why she wanted to go. Emperor Thenston tells her that the land in the Fenlarn Palace was completely consumed by a great fire and contaminated by dark magic, and he will not send her off to such a dangerous palace. Anthea says she will only visit the Fenlarn Palace and won't take a long time, but Emperor Thenston tells her it is a forbidden land, and the last words of the first emperor are enough to forbid any member of the royal family from going there. Anthea says she just worries about Blake. And if she goes there, she might find a way to free Blake from his curse. And she requests him to let her go to the Fenlarn Palace. Emperor Thenston is worried about her and does not want her to put in danger. But seeing Anthea's determination to protect Blake, he gives her only a once chance to go to the palace. Then Anthea is very happy and thanks him. On late night in the Imperial Palace, Unhan is sitting on the roof, thinking about how he got caught by Prince Blake while keeping an eye on Anthea as a cat. He sees Emperor Thenston is still awake and sitting on the sofa. Unhan secretly and silently enters the Emperor's room. Emperor Thenston also notices his presence. Seeing Emperor Thenston in this outfit, isn't he looking like a hot father? Unhan apologizes to His Majesty for the late night disturbance. But Emperor Thenston was waiting for him, and Unhan was ready to His Majesty's command. But tonight, Emperor Thenston is not going to command him. It's the first time he is asking a favor, Unhand to entrust the protection and safeguarding of the crown princess. He wishes for Unhand to stay by the princess's side and protect her. Unhand gets nervous. He never expected that his majesty would make such a request. Let me clarify. Emperor is saying to protect Anthea like a bodyguard, not like a husband. Unhand understands his assignments and accepts it. He also says he will protect Crown Princess if His Majesty will not tell him to do. Emperor Thenston is happy to hear this and thanks him. After that, the day had finally come when Anthea would go to the Fenlarn Palace. But first, she wanted to keep this fact from Blake. Anthea lied to him, saying that she is going to the Imperial Palace and will be back late. Blake, with a smile, told her to take her time with zero doubt. Anthea, feeling guilty, asked him to take care of himself while practicing swordsmanship. Finally, they both held hands, and Blake told her to have a safe trip, making a single person like me jealous. But I'm happy to see them together always. When Anthea was in the carriage, Blake waved goodbye to her. Isn't this scene cute? While going, Anthea prayed that she would find a clue or cure to break Prince Blake's curse. When she reached the Imperial Palace, she went straight to the secret room on the third floor. There, she was totally surprised because his father was already there waiting for her with an unknown person. Anthea apologized for being late and asked his father who that unknown person was. Unhan, who already knew her, was nervous. Emperor Thenston introduced that person as Unhan, who would escort her to the Fenlarn Palace. Anthea was still confused, wondering that she had met him before. Dear Anthea, Unhan is a cat you used to play, hug, and feed him. Unhan kneeled down, greeting the crown princess. Anthea also remembered him not as a cat, but as an imperial prince of Chang. In the past, Unhan was the imperial prince of Chang a great grand empire of the east. He was about to be executed because he was chosen by the ominous black dragon. He fled all the way to the Asteric Empire, and Emperor Thenston discovered the battered Unhan and healed him. Emperor Thenston took in Unhan, who was in a predicament similar to him, and truly cared for Unhan. Unhan, in turn, devoted himself faithfully to Emperor Thenston. Unhan followed Emperor Thenston's command and protected Blake. When he would get sick, Unhan would even heal Blake. That's why Blake also remembered him but as a mysterious person. Unhan was the shadow planted by Emperor Thenston to protect Blake. Now, in the present, Emperor Thenston told her that he had entrusted Unhan with the security of the Crown Prince. He apologized to her for not telling her sooner, but Unhan took all the blame of Emperor Thenston on him and said it was his fault for not telling her this sooner. Anthea thanked him for keeping his highness and her safe. Emperor Thenston gave her a present, and Anthea asked him, what is this? Emperor Thenston said it's a present that will protect her. It's a purity tool made in a temple, and it will help protect her against dark magic. Anthea thanked him for such a precious gift. 
Emperor Fenston said Unhan would use his magic to teleport her to the Fenlarn Palace, and he would go with her. If he or she encountered any danger, then return immediately. Anthea saw his father, who always worried about her, saying his father's face is a national treasure, and Unhan also agreed with her. Now his father controlled his laugh, where Anthea knew that the father and son were so weak to compliment. Now, without wasting time, Anthea was ready to go. Unhan hesitated and told her that she needed to hold his hand to use teleportation magic. At first, Anthea blushed, thinking of his reaction. They held hands, and Unhan told her to close her eyes and relax. Unhan then used his magic to teleport them to the Fenlarn Palace. When they arrived, the surroundings were very dark, the sky was red, and the Fenlarn Palace was completely burned. She was very shocked to see the palace in such ruins. She wasn't expecting it to be so desolate. Unhan noticed that the land had been contaminated with dark magic and told his highness to return immediately. Anthea said that they had just arrived and she would take a look around the palace. They approached the palace and the dark magic grew stronger. Unhan told her to return, but Anthea insisted on going farther. Anthea saw a stone slab with text written on it. She noticed the text was written in ancient text, Rauman language. Unhan asked her what was written on the stone slab. And Anthea read, The great emperor of Raum, Lakshal, let it be known. The heavens chose the great Raum, and Raum followed the heavens' wishes to establish the Zelkon Empire, and nurture it into a great empire. However, its people were ignorant and ungrateful, jealous of Raum's power, and amongst them, Philips, with power received from the goddess of light, destroyed the Zelkon Empire, and founded a new empire. In the year 687 of the Empire, on September 1st, Lakshal planned to bring down the Altera Palace to restore law and order. I shall punish Philips and the wicked group that dared to covet Raum's seat. Foolish subjects, submit yourselves to Raum. If you refuse, everything Raum has bestowed upon you will be taken away. The land of Khan shall be enshrouded by darkness and forever erode away in suffering. Anthea read what the stone slab said. Unhan was also surprised by her skill. Anthea asked for his opinion about the text, and Unhan said it was pathetic and heinous. He asked for her opinion on this stone slab, and Anthea said that the stone slab criticizes Lakshaw and Rao. Or maybe it was written by Raum's hater because Phillips was the biggest enemy of the Raum family at the time. However, the stone slab doesn't contain a single criticism of Philip. Unhan said maybe Emperor Philip erected this stone slab by himself. Anthea agreed with Unhan's point, and there is a good chance that this stone slab wasn't erected by Lakshaw, or a member of the Raum family. It was probably done by Phillips. When Anthea touched the stone slab, the purity tool glowed bright, and she got a vision of a woman asking Philip, What is this stone slab? How could he do something like this so inhuman? Philip got angry and told her to watch her words, stating that he is an emperor now, and if any misguided disrespect continues, he will not forgive her. Unhan woke up Anthea from her vision and asked her if she was all right. Anthea said she felt very dizzy, and Unhan told her it might be happening because of dark magic. He told her they should head back now, but Anthea insisted on staying a bit longer here. Unhan told her that his majesty gave an order to return immediately if she or he finds any danger. But suddenly Unhan felt something dangerous, and he carried Anthea on his arm and apologized to her for his rudeness and started running. Anthea was also shocked by Unhan's reaction. There they noticed a bunch of demons surrounding them. And our video ends. In the next part, we will see whether they are going to fight with the demons or if they will simply avoid the demons and run away for their lives. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you like this video. For the next part, click on the left side of this screen. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel.